It may be easy to lie on the internet, but it's also very easy to spot one. All it takes is a quick search or glance at Wikipedia and you can uncover the truth. But don't let this fool you. Lazy, sloppy lies are everywhere, and they give you a false sense of confidence. Well-crafted, careful lies also roam your Facebook feed. They're just too sneaky to get detected. You'll never notice them, and that's what makes them so good. What's special about these lies isn't how convincing or widespread they are, but how they're actually designed to become true. In theory, each news site works independently going out, gathering data, and writing stories based on what they find. Sites may disagree, but each is a vote for one version of the truth, letting us read several and think critically, finding commonalities, discrepancies, and ultimately the likely truth. Some companies still do this, but not nearly enough. Real reporting is really expensive. There are travel, legal, equipment, and licensing costs, and it all takes a very long time. Even after all that work, there's still no guarantee anything will materialize. If a story turns out to be inaccurate or uninteresting, a good journalist has to abandon it, and tens of thousands of dollars are flushed down the drain. But if the goal is to make money, and it usually is, there's a far easier way. Instead of spending weeks gathering primary sources, journalists can turn what's already available into four or five articles a day. Even a well-meaning, respectable writer at one of these companies will soon realize that it's either this or no food on the table. This is where lists, reaction pieces, and cheap summaries come from. There's simply no time for primary sources, so journalists write articles about articles. This kind of cheap, watered-down content isn't just annoying to see. The effect it has on the truth is absolutely disastrous. No longer is each source a filter through which information is checked and researched, but simply an echo of other sources. Think of it like herd immunity. If enough people are resistant to a disease, it's very hard to spread, even to the especially vulnerable. When every site thoroughly researches its articles, a lie can sneak by once, at worst. But when sites are as susceptible as they are now, and there's this much sharing between sites, lies spread incredibly fast. An honest mistake in one article quickly becomes a lie in many, as journalists desperately repost and spread what they see. The Onion has been mistaken for real news, and simple typos have created widespread misconceptions. But that's just on accident. When lies are manufactured, it's much, much worse. What makes something true on the internet are the number and quality of sources. So a good liar actually sources their fake story, photoshopped image, or made up fact, and so effectively that it's indistinguishable from the truth. And because online journalism is so connected, all it takes is one desperate writer for a lie to enter the cycle, and everything else follows. And as I'm sure you're aware, there are many desperate writers. <clears throat> The lie might be emailed to a writer who's short of their daily article quota, just the gift they need, and not one they have time to question. This may work, but it also might fall apart if people do some digging. A more effective method is called circular sourcing. Whether they admit it or not, journalists use Wikipedia too, even if only as a starting place. So you begin by editing Wikipedia with the lie, and then wait. Someone will probably spot and remove it, but it only takes one journalist to see it first. A bit of negligence or mixing up of sources and the lie will make it into their article. If you're lucky, they might even mistakenly cite it. If this sounds unlikely, remember, they often have minutes, not hours, to write an article, and their job depends on it. So now you go back to Wikipedia, but this time with a source, that same article you just tricked. More people will find it, more will be written, and more sources created. Each website will cite another in a big circle of misinformation. The big, reputable sites won't pick it up at first, but over time it'll travel up the stream, first on a blog, then a local news site, then a larger one, and so on. This is how truth can be manufactured on the internet. All it takes is one unsourced Wikipedia edit, and it becomes common knowledge. The foundations of online journalism are so shaky that as long as there's still money in this kind of watered-down content, people will continue exploiting it. We don't even really know how often it happens. All we have are the reports of people who admit to having done it. And these stories are often more profitable than the articles they describe. So who knows, maybe they too are lies. When an idea for a project pops into my head, I've always gone straight to YouTube to learn how to make it. 
Maybe I want to learn some specific software, so I spend forever finding a decent channel, and then realize they're using the 2013 version of that program, and I've already lost momentum. So I've started using Skillshare, a website and mobile app with full video classes on specific software and skill topics. The idea is that because classes are curated and the teachers are actually paid, they're really incentivized to create high quality courses. You can ask questions, download videos, and track your progress. I often have a specific problem or question with a program I'm using, and I can just jump straight to the corresponding video to find a solution on Skillshare. It's really handy. The first 300 people to use this link will get two months to see if they like it, completely free. Go and search for something you're interested in, whether it be video editing, creative writing, or programming, and just give it a try. It helps support this channel, and if you don't like it, you can just leave. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video.